Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through the Plum Island Horror. All right, and welcome back to my tutorial and solo playthrough of the Plum Island Horror. This is part two of the series. As I continue on my playthrough, we did one round in the last video, and so we're starting off in round two. And so currently where we're at, the biohazard track has not moved yet. The overrun points track has not moved yet because none of the zombies have made it down to the end, although this one is getting pretty close here. And then I've gained three evacuation points. So we're in a good position here. We, we are well on our way. Now as a reminder, in round two of the game, you're going to get two actions per uh, activation. So we get to do a lot more stuff this time around. And then when it gets to round three through seven, we'll have three actions for each of those activations during those rounds. And then back down to two for round eight and back down to one for round nine. So I am ready to go. I'm, I'm excited to continue this playthrough and to show you. Now, just to let you know, if I have any rules issues, I'm gonna be posting those in the comments. So please check the pinned comment. It'll have any rules issues that I have encountered that found out later I got wrong. Uh, there are a lot of rules and I'm not perfect, so I will get a few things wrong. So do check out that pinned comment or other comments that people might point out. And once again, I want to thank you for joining me on Tabletop for One for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Plum Island Horror. Here we go. We are ready to start. Now, since it's the afternoon, we don't do the hunger phase. We're going to go straight into the activity phase and we're drawing our first token and it is the purple faction. So the first thing I want to look at is doing the crisis adrenaline moves. And I think I'm going to bring the fireman down a couple spaces. He can move two spaces with his foot action. Again, the crisis adrenaline only does the foot action, not vehicular movement. I think that's it. And so now I have two actions during this activation, and I think I want to help rescue my doctor here. I'm going to bring the fireman one, two spaces into here. That's going to be the one action, and then I'm going to attack with the fireman for the second action. The nice thing about the fireman is he has a close combat value of four. So he's rolling four dice. Now we are up against a stack of three, which is going to do one damage to him unless I block the damage with a shield. So we'll see here. And we do block the damage. We get a critical hit, and so we get to reroll this critical hit. Let's see what we get. And, oh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That's not good. But we do get to take one tile off. The nice thing is, is I have the firemen there. In case they attack, I can use the firemen to attack back. So that's why I put them in there in that place. I'm just trying to protect the doctor. All right, so I've done my two actions. Now we go on to the follow action. And I think I want to use a ranged combat attack with Phil King here. I want to do attack these zombies while I have the chance. They're one space away there in a connected adjacent area. It'll cost me one of my resources, the, one of the supplies in the orange faction. And then I get to roll two dice, but I actually get three because Phil King has the ability to gain an additional ranged combat rating if he attacks with only one space away. He has the ability to attack up to two spaces away, but he loses that bonus if he's two spaces away. So I get three dice. As a reminder on a ranged attack, if I roll a shield, it's actually one damage. So we'll see. Oh my goodness, that is an awful roll. That could not be any worse, <laughs> goodness gracious. I guess it could be worse, it could be all blanks, but wow, that was awful. Now, unfortunately, that means I have to draw a fake card because after using a follow action, we draw a fake card. And so we check to see if this is going to have us draw an event card. And no event card. So that worked out. Now for the next turn, I'm not sure what I should do here. Maybe I should attack with John Deere while I have the chance. John Deere has uh, three melee attack against the stack of three. So that should probably be a good idea. So we're going to try and attack... Now that stack will do one damage back if he doesn't defend against it, let's see. He does defend, but no damage. Wow, my rolls are just not that good. And so now we draw and yep, sure enough, we have an event card. This is not working out. Oh my goodness, this might be a short playthrough. Okay, so it says, a stranger who doesn't seem quite right walks into a crowded market. Draw a fate number. Okay, we'll draw a fate number here. To get the affected track number, then draw an another fate number and count down the track that number of areas starting with A moving through forks normally. 
Oh, and then we had to spawn a stack in that area. All right, so here's our second fade number. So we have track one moving down two spaces, so one and two. So in this spot here, we're spawning another stack of horrors. Oh, this is not good. I may ease off on the follow actions because the follow actions are now proving to be a little on the detrimental side, we'll see. But we're drawing our next token here and it's a fate card. So we're gonna be activating and spawning some zombies here. So we're spawning in track number three. Again, the spawn value is found on the biohazard track depending on where you're at. And since we're at zero, it's only three in a stack. So it spawns right there. And then we're activating track number four. Now as a reminder, on track number four here, we have a plus one movement token. And so that's gonna get used right now. So the token's gonna go away and any stacks on track four here are gonna get additional movement. Now this stack here is a huge stack of zombies here. I mean, there's like eight, nine here, whatever there is, it's above seven, which means it normally moves only one space, but it'll actually move two. But since it's moving through a damaged bridge here, for every damage on this bridge here, it's gonna remove a tile. So we remove two tiles and we take this damage away. Then the, we'll resume the movement here and we go one and two like this. All right, so we're drawing for the next token here and it's a doom token. Oh man, here it comes. Another event card, let's see what it is. And it says, if the Old Republic Airport 6E has any damage marker, spawn a murder of horror stacks in the area. And sure enough, 6E has damage markers. So we get to spawn another stack. And again, that's gonna be three. Oh man, those civilians are dead because it automatically causes a close combat attack. And the zombies are gonna do one damage, killing off those civilians. They'll gain a tile to that stack and we'll add a cube to the biohazard bag. Now I forgot to add a cube from the last close combat attack that I had with the firemen. So we're adding two cubes to that bag. And so, wow. Things are just getting bleak out there, aren't they? All right, so we're drawing another token here out of the bag, and let's see, we got another fate token, okay. And here's our card. We're spawning in track number four, so three there, and then we're activating five and six. Okay, so as a reminder, when activating tracks, you know, you start off one track at a time. Now these are gonna get plus one movement, so this one's actually gonna move three spaces, one, two, and three and then we're gonna end in close combat there. Now, if it helps, you can use combat tokens to track when you're gonna to need to do those because you do the combats after the activations, all right? And so this one's gonna trigger a close combat here because you activate the furthest along stacks first. So this one's gonna have a close combat here, and then this one's gonna move, and so it's gonna move along here, and we're not sure which direction, so we're gonna to have to draw a fate number and see, and it's drawing a number two fate number, so it's gonna move into this location here and move on and it goes one, two, and then we're gonna have to draw another fate number to see where it's gonna go from there. At two again, so it's gonna go to this spot here. And then our last movement here, this one has a stack of four, so it's gonna go one, and then we're gonna draw another fate number. Let's see what we get. It's a fate number five, so it's gonna move into this space, so it'll end its movement there and we're gonna have a close combat there. So we have three combats going on for this round. Wow. All right, so we'll solve the easy one here first. So it's gonna do damage to the civilian. It's gonna gain a tile in that space. And then on top of that, we're gonna add one biohazard cube to the bag. And then the next combat here is gonna be between Miguel and the stack here. Now Miguel has a close combat value of three. So we'll roll for that. Let's see. Oh, not too bad. We've got a critical hit, another hit, a full hit here, and then we get to reroll this die. We're hoping for a half heart or a shield or something like that. Another critical hit. And then let's see if we can roll for a shield. Oh, check that out. That is perfect. Finally, I get a good roll. So we did two critical hits, one full heart of damage, and we blocked one damage. So that's gonna do three damage to the stack, taking off three tiles. Now, of course, we are going to have to add a cube to the biohazard bag, but that was a really good combat. So Miguel did, walked away unscathed, and that stack is almost dead. And now we go on to this combat over here between Johnny Deer and that stack. And so we're gonna be rolling three dice again. And let's see. All right, one damage. But that's gonna mean that he's gonna take one damage because he didn't block any. And now he's down one health. All right, so we're ready for the next activation and it is 
an orange faction activation. So let's see, what do we want to do? I have the ability to do the crisis movement. And so I think I'm going to use the crisis movement to move him one, two spaces into here. And I'm not going to use crisis movement for anyone else. All right. So now we have our two actions for the turn. And I think the first action I'm going to do is this action here. I'm going to do a location action of gaining supplies. And so you look at how many icons are there for the forge action. There's two icons. So that means I'm going to gain two supplies to the orange faction, which puts them at five. That also means that I put an exhausted location marker at that location, which will get removed at the end of the night. And then for the second action, I think I'm going to attack with Johnny Deer and try and get rid of those zombies. Let's see. All right. I kind of crashed everything here, but that was actually a really good roll. I don't even need to re-roll at this point because I've done enough damage and defended enough to get rid of that entire stack. So that is gone. And then we add one biohazard cube to the bag. And so that's it for my two actions. Now do I want to do any follow action? I think I'm going to do one follow action. I'm going to use short patrol to repair this area here. And so we have to draw a fade card and then consult the repair guide. But on a six, we automatically repair that. So that is completely repaired. So that was really good. Now we do have to draw a fade card to see if we draw an event card. And no, we don't. So really, really good. Now at this point, I have run out of fate cards, so I'm going to have to reshuffle this deck. All right, so for my next follow action, I'm going to use the search action with Ralph here in the uh, dump. <laughs> We're going to search the dump for something. Let's see what we can find. All right. Crates full of berries. A pickup truck full of freshly picked berries goes barreling past your unit. The truck sign says, have a very nice day. And you send out word that it looks like some nourishment and a massive vitamin C boost can be found close by. Place three supplies in a random civilian unit in the Sherry's Berries area of 1J. Wow, so it made it all the way over here at the bottom of the map. Okay, so we take a random civilian unit. That's from those civilians that were left over. And we place it there along with three supplies. Now, as a reminder, any unit moving in or through an area that has supplies on that particular zone, they automatically can pick those up. And another side note is you can always trade supplies between different factions as long as that faction unit is in the same space. And one other thing to note at the bottom here it says exhaust this area after resolving this card. So we do have to add an exhausted location to that location. All right, and so now we're drawing a fake card to see if we have to draw an event card. And sure enough, we do. Oh, yeah, pushing my luck here. Spoiled food and expired meds. Each player must discard two supplies. If a player can't discard the supplies or chooses not to, they must apply a total of two hits on any of their units instead. If any of the Rocky Top Food Mart or Palcati's uh, Italian Deli or Wiley Brothers Bar and Grill civilian units have been evacuated, players need only discard one supplies or take one hit. Now, unfortunately, of the units that I have evacuated, none of those are those types of civilians. So I have to lose two supplies from each faction here. And that is really unfortunate because we are almost at the point of needing to spend supplies because that's going to happen at the beginning of the next round being a night round. All right, so we're ready for our next turn here. And our next turn is a fate card. Hopefully something good this time, but probably not. Oh, no spawn. However, we have to activate tracks one, two, and three. That is not good. So let's see. We activate track one. Now, all three of these are going to have movement added to them so plus one movement and so this one is a stack of three and a stack of three normally moves three areas but in this case it's going to move four so one will draw a fate number to decide where it's going and it's going across this bridge oh no so it's going to end its movement here and in combat with my unit so we'll place a combat token there and then we'll activate this other stack which is going to go one two three it needs to go one more space and let's see where it's going to go. Oh, no. It's going to combine right here. So now we have the stack of six horror units. And this is just going to be not good for my tennis players. All right. So we're, now we're activating track number two here. So this one is already going to end up in combat with the firemen. And then we're going to activate this stack. Now this stack has seven. So it's only going to move two spaces. So it moves right there. And then we're activating this track here. So this one's going to go, looks like three total spaces. So one, two, three right here. And then this one's going to go four. One, two. Now we check a fate number to see where it's going. 
and this goes on this side. So three and four right there. We didn't get any extra zombies, but that was a lot of uh, bad activations. So we're gonna start our combat at the very bottom here on the screen, and that's gonna be attacking the tennis players. The tennis players only have a melee roll of two, and while we are in a building here, this is a stack of six tiles here, and they do a quarter point of damage per tile. That puts it at 1.5 damage, but you round up, so it's gonna be two damage against the tennis players. Now the tennis players haven't been hurt yet, but it's still gonna do damage, so let's see. Oh no, it is not nothing. We, we did nothing against them, and then we're gonna take two damage onto the tennis players, and now they only have two health left. And of course that means us adding a biohazard token to the bag. All right, so that combat is done. We're moving on to the next combat, which is between the firemen and that stack. This time we're gonna roll four dice here. Let's see. We got a critical hit and a hit, so that's good. We're hoping to block the damage because it'll take one damage if we don't. Oh, sure enough, there we go. All right, so we destroyed that stack. We are going to add another cube to the bag. But thankfully, the firemen stopped that, those guys from attacking there. So that was really good. All right, moving on to the next turn. And let's see, we got the purple activating this time. And so for the crisis move, I'm going to move the firemen one and two into this space here. And then I'll move this one into this space here. I know it seems weird, but I'm going to let this one overrun that place. I'm going to try and get the civilians that way towards the bridge. We'll see if we can do that. And so that's it for my Crisis Adrenaline move. Now we have two actions to do. And so I'm gonna activate the Short Patrol to do an evacuate action. Now, if the Short Patrol is in the same space as the Alyssa here, you can do an evacuate action for free. And now the Alyssa can take two evacuation tokens at a time. So we will evacuate this one here and that will grant one evacuation point as a rescue. Now that doesn't count against my action points because that was a free action. So I, had, I still have two more actions left. And I think the first action I'm going to do is to use the crowd control action to move this into this space here. And then my second action is to do a crowd control to move these into here. That way, uh, Johnny Deer can move all four of these with his admin action. He has an admin value of four. That's my choice for this round. Now, do I want to do any follow actions? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a follow action of trying to repair this bridge with the tennis players. And so we're going to draw a fate number and see it's number two. Now, unfortunately, that means that I don't repair it that much. So it's only going to repair by one. And so I'll need another repair action to completely repair that. And since I did a follow action, we're checking for an event card. No event card. So we're good there. And I don't think I'm gonna take a second follow action. I'm just not gonna risk it. So we're gonna move on to drawing a new token. And this time it's the orange faction. It's the last token in the bag. And so with my crisis adrenaline, I'm gonna move Miguel here, just one space, and I'm not gonna move any others. And so the first action I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teleport Miguel all the way over here because he has the ability to go from beach to beach using his move action. So he'll go here to be in the same space as Ralph because I need to transfer some supplies. I'm gonna transfer two supplies over to the orange side because it's coming up at the end of the night and I don't wanna to take too many damage. Actually, I'll make it three. I, don't, I just don't wanna take too much damage from you know not having enough supplies because orange has taken a lot of damage. There's five points of damage on the orange's board whereas there's only one point on the, the purple's board. So I don't wanna to take too much more damage and so that's why I did that movement. Now for the second action, I am going to try and repair the bridge again down at the very bottom. And that's a four, which will mean I get to repair that one point of damage. And so that bridge is now finally repaired, which hopefully means I can get both the tennis players and a couple civilians out in that way. Now we go on to follow actions and I will use the firemen to try and repair that bridge. So let's see what we get. It's a five. And so that, of course, means I get to remove as many damage markers as my admin rating. And I have four, so I get to remove both of those. So that's done. Now I had to draw a card to see if I get an event card and no event card. So we're good there. Now for the second follow action, I'm going to do a repair at the hospital. And we'll draw a card for that repair. 
it's a five, so once again, up to my admin rating, and so I get to repair that completely, which is really good. But once again, I'm drawing another fake card to see if we draw an event card. No event card. We're really good there. All right. So that's going to end the round. And so now we're going to replenish the location. So we remove the exhausted location markers. We regenerate any mutations, but there are none in the board. But now we have to draw two cubes from the bag. And there are a lot of yellow cubes in here. So let's see what we get. We get one yellow and one green. That's not too bad. That's going to increase the biohazard level by one. That only puts us at level one. It takes 17 to lose the game. And then we're going to put everything back in the bag here, all the tokens. And we're going to start the next round. All right, so now we're starting a night round. So at the beginning of this turn, I now have to pay supplies for all my units and for civilians in my compounds. So first of all, all my units on the uh, orange side, I have to pay six supplies because it's five of my characters plus one for the civilians. And so, yeah, there goes all my supplies. Next up, we have the purple team and there's only three supplies. And so that's gonna cause two units to take damage. And so I'll have Ralph take another point of damage that puts him at two damage. And then I'll have the fire marshal take one damage. All right, so we start the next round with no supplies. We're gonna have to start scrounging for supplies. So that means I can't take range attacks or do vehicular movement. So that is just not good at all. We draw our first token. Our first token is the orange team. Now for crisis movement, I am gonna move Miguel one and then two right here and put him in the way of this zombie stack. Maybe I can stop them after all instead of letting this place get overrun. I guess I can just put him here because it really doesn't matter where and this is actually better because there's more defense in a, a building zone. So I'll, I'll leave them there. So that was the first adrenaline move. And I don't think I'm gonna move any others. All right, so we have three actions now. And so we get to do a lot of stuff. This is really good. First, we're gonna do a crowd control action with Johnny Deer. And he has an admin rating of four, which can move this entire stack of four into the, that area there. Now I can't move with them. So I'll have to do a separate action to move there or use a crisis adrenaline to move there. So we'll wait on that. Next up, we'll also do the crowd control action and push these two civilians into this next area here, getting them closer to the firemen. And then I'm gonna do the forage action for two supplies right here. And that's gonna exhaust that location. So we gain two supplies for the orange and exhaust this one. All right, so now for a follow action, I am gonna use one follow action. That's gonna be the fire marshal moving into place to protect these civilians here. And that'll have us draw in a fake card and we don't draw an event card. So that was really good. As far as the second one, so I could do a search action here where the fireman's at. So maybe that's what I'll do. So we'll do a search action. Let's see what it says. Oh, I have not done this one. All right, place the hero of the day NPC unit by the game round track. When the next player unit eliminates any horrors unit while resolving combat of either type, take the Hero of the Day unit and immediately place it in the same area as the Victorious unit. If this results in the area surpassing the player unit capacity, place the Hero unit in any eligible adjacent area instead and exhaust this area after resolving this card. All right, so here is the Hero of the Day unit. So we'll just place them over here for now, but that's gonna be really useful for later. I was kind of hoping for supplies though, so that's unfortunate. Now we exhaust that location and we draw a fake card to see if we draw an event card and that is not happening. All right, we're ready for the next turn. We draw a token here and it's a fake token. All right, time to spawn and activate. So we are spawning in track one. So that's gonna gain three in track one there. And then we have surge. So we draw a fate number and we're gonna be activating that track twice. So track number two is gonna be activated two times. All right, so that means this stack is gonna be moving and it's a stack of seven. So it only moves one space at a time. So one for its first activation and then two for its second activation. So that actually wasn't too bad. All right, moving on to the next turn, and it's the Doom token, of course. So we draw an event card, and it says that looks infected. Each player must assign one additional hit to any one wounded unit in their faction. Oh, that's too bad. So my, my hurt players are getting even more hurt. So I guess Johnny Deer is going to take one more point of damage. He's in a pretty safe area right now, so I'm not worried about that. I can always meta back him later if I need to. And then for the purple team, I guess the fire marshal... So now it's down to three total because now it has two hits on it. We're drawing the next token here and it's another fate token. And so we're spawning in track two, of course. 
<laughs> it was going to be too easy with track two there. And then we surge. So we draw another faint number here and activate track six twice. Ouch, 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 ouch. That is not good. All right, so the first activation is down here. It's going to move two spaces and end in combat. All right, we're going to finish the whole first activation, which means a combat up here. And then we'll do the second activation after that. So the first combat, this one's the easier one. So the civilian unit gets knocked out. This stack gets one more horror unit, and we're going to add one more biohazard cube to the bag. Then over here, Miguel is in combat, and he's going to roll three against that stack of four. He's going to take one damage if he doesn't block it. He blocks it and does one damage back, so not too bad. But that also is going to result in my last of the yellow cube being added to the bag. So next up is red cubes. All right, so we're ready for the next activation. That's gonna result in this one activating and doing a close combat, which we'll do in a moment. And this one's gonna move three spaces. So one, two, and then we have to draw a faint number to decide where it's going. And the faint number of one is gonna put it right here. So it might go towards the South Bay Bridge. Now, we do not want the South Bay Bridge to be overrun. However, these two units won't make it in there because they're gonna get hit by these uh, damaged areas here. So that is kind of good for us that it's going to remove those for us. But at the same time, uh, we don't want it to go that way. All right, so now we have a combat between Miguel and that stack again. Let's see if we can't do better on the damage. And all right, we have a critical hit and one and a half hearts. Let's see if we can get another half heart here. Oh, of course not. Of course not. All right, so two damage was done to that stack. But Miguel is going to take a hit of damage because he didn't block that time. And now we add a red cube to the bag. All right, so a lot happened in that turn, but we're moving on to the next turn here. Let's see what we get. And it is another orange token. Okay, so orange is activating again. Crisis Adrenaline is gonna have this one move one space. And it's also gonna have the tennis players move one space over here. And I think that's it. All right, so my first action of this activation is to attack this unit here. I wanna remove it completely because when I do, I will be able to bring out the hero of the day. And so that's gonna be my attack. It might cause damage to Miguel, but I think it's worth it. We just need to do one damage. Oh, wow. We did a lot of damage, way too much damage. We're hoping for shield, no shield. Okay, so he's gonna take one point of damage, which is unfortunate. It's gonna eliminate this unit. Now we do add a red cube back to the bag, but we get to add the hero of the day there. And the hero of the day has ranged attacks, and so he's range attack of three. He has a high admin and bravery rating. And on top of that, when defending in close combat, he can treat a missed die result as a shielded result. So he's gonna be very useful. Now my second action is to move these civilians out of harm's way into this space here, using the uh, crowd control action of uh, the tennis players here. And my next one is to use a search token with Phil King. So we're gonna search a card and let's see. All right, operating crop duster discovered. Choose only one option. Fly the plane, and that reduces the biohazard track by three spaces, which I don't need to do right now, or fly the plane and swoop down to pick up survivors. You may immediately ev evacuate up to two civilian units from any one area for free. And it says in both cases, if the Rex Kramer VIP unit is on the board, something happens, but he's not on the board. And this will exhaust that location after using it. So I'll put the exhaustion token down, now we have to decide where we're gonna evacuate civilians. I'm kind of just tempted to evacuate the ones right here, you know, to get them out because he only has an admin rating of two, so it's gonna be difficult for him to do so. So if we evacuate these two here, that's gonna be four points. Now that'll put me up to eight points of evacuation, which I need 26 at the end of the game. So we're well on our way, we're almost a third of the way there. Now for a follow action, I'm gonna do a search action with Ralph here and search another place. And uh, we have isolated glamping facility discovered with some sleeping glampers inside. <laughs> Place four supplies in a random civilian unit in this area. Ooh, that was really good. Especially that, you know, I need supplies. So four supplies, we get a random civilian. Wow, not bad at all. But now I draw a fate card to see if we draw an event card and that's not happening. So I can do one more follow action and while I have the chance, I think I'm gonna evacuate these civilians using the Air Med helicopter and uh, my unit here. And so that's gonna be another three points, putting us up to 11. So we are really getting there. 
Now, I do have to draw another fate card to see if we draw an event card. Wow, still no event card. So we are really good there. Now we draw a new token for the round and we have a fate token. Time to spawn and activate. Let's see. Spawning in track six. Okay. And once again, we're going to have a surge. <laughs> Of course, why not? Isn't that like the third surge in a row? All right, so track number two is gonna activate twice. And so it's gonna activate twice. So you can do each activation one at a time. So this is gonna move up one space. This one is gonna move up one, two, three spaces. That was the first activation. Next one moves up one space. And then check this out. One, two, three spaces. Oh no, that is not good. <laughs> All right, so we're drawing the last token of the round, and it's the purple token, which means we are using the purple faction, and we're going to do Crisis Adrenaline move. And so I'm going to move this one here, and I'm half tempted to move him out of harm's way. Now, he only has a movement of one, so he's going to go into this space here. I don't know if that was a good idea, <laughs> because that might have put him in more harm's way, but I, I'm going to move him further when I get the chance here to get in that way. We'll also do Crisis Adrenaline with the Fireman. Moving him here, and I think that's it. All right, so the first action, I'm gonna use the fireman to crowd control these civilians into this space here. And the second action, I'm gonna use this NPC here to go one and I think two right here. And then next I'll use this other NPC because I wanna get him over there to help, or at least on the way. So he has a movement of four. We'll go one, two, three, and I think four right here. I think that's good placement for him. All right, so that's it for the purple action. So I'm going to do a follow action of moving the orange faction into this space here, which is going to gather up those supplies. And so now orange is up to five supplies, which is really good. Purple can grab those four supplies later for them. But now we draw a fate card to see if we draw an event card. No event card. Moving on to the next follow action if I want to do one. And I think I'll do the follow action of reposition, moving this helicopter over here. And that, of course, will have me drawing another fate card. And this time we do draw an event card, of course. All right, Frenzied Horrors. Draw a fate number. Okay, so we have a fate number of one. All horror units in the area furthest along on that track number will move along a, oh, move along a green arrow connection to an area in the adjacent track. If there are two connections, the horrors will move into the area with the lower number track. Note that no combat is started with this move. Okay, so that's okay. And you know what? It actually doesn't affect me because this one unit at the very bottom doesn't have any green connections. And it's the only unit in that track other than the one at the spawn point. So that actually worked out really well. But that is one of the few times that they can jump tracks. So keep that in mind. Now we are at the end of the round. It's the end of the night. Now one thing I noticed that I did wrong in the last round was I removed these exhausted location markers. You'll possibly have seen the caption that I put on there. You're only supposed to do this at the end of the night, not the end of every round. And so it was my fault there. I think I used this location to get a couple extra forge tokens. So I'm going to remove those now to correct that. And we'll just count me as not having uh, done an action for that turn. So that was my fault. Sorry about that mistake. Now we regenerate the mutations, but there are no mutations on the board yet. And then we're going to do the biohazard infect step. Now we already have some uh, red cubes in here. We have a lot of cubes. All right, so let's see. Another yellow and a green. So that's gonna put my biohazard level at only two. So we're okay. We're okay with the biohazard level. Not worried about that. I am worried about these big stacks heading down and possibly causing an overrun. So we're gonna to have to start dealing with those. All right, so we're moving on to round number four, which puts us at the morning of the next day. And we're gonna have three actions per activation. So keep that in mind. And so we draw our first token and it is a fate card, of course. And so it's gonna activate, oh my goodness, another surge. Seriously, another surge. All right, so it's gonna activate or spawn in track four. So we get a spawn of three, which will stack on that one. And then it's gonna activate number three twice. All right, so first we activate this one. It's gonna move two spaces, one, two, which is gonna end in combat. And then this one here is gonna move three spaces, one, two, three. All right, that's the first activation. So we'll do the combat here. And so who am I gonna choose for combat? I guess I'm gonna choose Ed uh, because Ed has more combat value. So he's gonna roll two dice against that stack of four. He's gonna at least take one damage unless he blocks it. Let's see. And there's zero. Oh man. So he's gonna take one damage. We're also adding one red cube to the bag. 
Now that is the first time that Ed took damage, so he still has three hit points left. That's not too bad. Now we go on to the second activation of that Surge. That's going to cause a combat here. However, this is going to move into place and join that combat. So now we have this huge, huge stack of seven tokens here. And now I'm kicking myself for not evacuating those civilians earlier because you can't evacuate in a location that's compromised and it's currently compromised by this stack. All right, so now we go into the combat here. We're rolling two, ice with, two dice with uh, Ed. And, you know, here's the thing. Ed's going to take two damage if he doesn't block some. So while he blocks one, he doesn't do any damage. So we'll take one damage and we'll add one red cube to the bag. That's okay. We have the hero of the day on his way to save the day. <laughs> so that's what we're going to go for. All right. So now it's the next turn here. We have the orange activating. Okay. So that's not too bad because I can use the hero of the day. Now I'm not going to do any crisis adrenaline moves with the orange faction units. I think I'll leave them in the places that they're in. And so for the hero of the day, I will move one space here. And so that will be the first action. Now, I do want to note that Crisis Adrenaline moves, you can't move NPC faction units. So that's why I had to wait until the actual turn to move him. And so now I'm going to attack, I think. Maybe I should just move him in. You know, instead I'm going to move him two spaces into there. Because he has a better, uh, you know, melee combat value than ranged combat value. Plus he has the ability to block all sorts of damage if he rolls misses. So... We're gonna roll right now with a combat value of four. He'll take two damage if he doesn't block anything. All right, so we got we got three blocks. As a reminder, his blanks are always a, a defense. So we got three blocks and a critical hit. We get to roll this. We're hoping for one more damage. Another critical hit. Ooh, that's two damage. All right, two damage and a bunch of blocks. So that was really good. So we remove those two tokens there. We're also adding one more biohazard to the bag. So that was two actions on the orange team. Now I can do one more action. And I don't think I'll spend it on this combat here. I think I'll do something else. I think at this point I will use that, <laughs> that forage action and get those units of supplies that I needed. So that was the right call. All right, now we're going on to the follow action. And I think I'll use the crowd control to move this civilian unit into there with uh, Ralph here. That's going to have me draw a card. No event card, so we're good there. And then I'm going to use a search action with the fireman. So let's see what we got. Vaccine trials, guinea pigs wanted. Okay, so you check your unit's bravery rating. He has a bravery rating of four. Again, that's the, the red value. And it says, perfect lab subjects. Reduce the biohazard track level by three spaces. All right. So that brings our biohazard track level back to zero. Now the card did say to exhaust that location, so we'll do that now. And we'll draw a fake card to see if we need to draw an event card. And no event card, okay. On to the next turn here, drawing a new token. And it's the Doom token, my favorite token, right? <laughs> All right, death from above. Oh no, here comes the mutation. Spawn the Birds of Prey mutation standee in the Inga Forest area 2B. And so we'll spawn it right here. Now this one has an interesting movement value, so when you move it, you draw a fate number to get the track number the unit flies, then draw another fate number and add three or four during the night game rounds. And that unit lands on the resulting area on that track. So that'll be interesting. It does four damage each time it attacks and it has four health. So we're definitely gonna want to get the hero of the day involved in attacking and killing that mutation. Once again, mutations regenerate a point of health at the end of every round. So gotta watch out for this guy. This guy's gonna be trouble. Now it also says that if Sharpie's Rifle Shop Civilians Unit is on the map or evacuated, then uh, Lord Sharp himself snipes a few birds from the sky and deals one damage to that mutation. And unfortunately that civilian was one that was killed earlier. So we don't get that added bonus. So that, that is really unfortunate. All right, we're ready for the next token here. And it is the purple activation this time, so that's good. Now for Crisis Adrenaline, I'm gonna move the Doctor in the same place as the Shore Patrol because I want to have, you know, give the short patrol some support in case it gets hit. And then we'll move Ralph here into the same space as Johnny Deer, gathering those two supplies as we move. It's actually four supplies, so it's a lot of supplies. That was definitely worth it. And I think I'm going to move the mayor out of here, just get him, you know, out of harm's way a little bit. We'll move him into this space here. And I think that's it for crisis movement. Actually, let's move the firemen as well into this space. All right, so three actions for the purple. The first thing I want to do is move some of these units. We got four units here using the admin rating of four of the firemen. Move them into the forest here. 
And then I'm going to spend one supply to attack this stack here with the short patrol. He has a range attack of two. So we're hoping to remove a couple of those tiles. Let's see. Oh, man. Just no luck. And then I'm going to use the crowd control action once again to move this civilian here. And then I'll use the evacuate action to evacuate the civilian, gaining us one more point. All right, so now we have the follow action. And so I think it's time that I start moving these. It's probably risky, but I'm gonna use the crowd control to move this one space. That's gonna have me draw a card, no event, all right? And then I'll use the evacuate here with the Coast Guard to evacuate this token here, giving me two more points, drawing another card to see, no event card. Wow, that worked out. Now it's the end of that turn, so we draw a new token, and it is a fate token. Oh. As much as I like drawing for initiative, man, drawing those fates can just be brutal. And so now we spawn in track number two, so that's going to be three tokens. We're getting low on tokens, by the way. I think there's roughly about 10 or 12 tokens left. And then we're going to activate tracks three and four. All right, so three has an activation all the way down here at the end, which is going to cause a combat. And then four is going to activate. Now we have to draw a fade card to see where they're going. And they're going number one, which will be into this place here. So I guess it's good that I uh, moved those civilians while I had the chance. But I, I don't know. Sid might die. This is not good for Sid. And then this one's going to move. It uh, looks like two spaces. It has six in its stack here. So one and two like so. All right, so we have two combats to resolve. We'll resolve this one first. That's going to have Sid rolling two. All right, so he's going to block one point of damage, but he's actually going to take one because there are a total of eight. And if you consult the chart, eight tiles in a building area will do two damage. Now the other combat here, we're going to be using the hero of the day. So that means we're going to roll four against that unit there. And once again, any misses are blocks. So that's really good. All right, so we block two damage, which will block everything there. We do two damage. We'll roll these critical hits, see what we get. Another critical hit, that's three. Looking for more. Four damage total. Let's see how many tiles there are. I think there's five. Yep, there's five. So that brings it down to one tile. He blocks all incoming damage too. So that worked out really well. We do have to add a biohazard cube to the bag for melee combat though. And I didn't add one for Sid, so we're adding two to the bag. All right, so we're moving on to the next turn, drawing a token, another fate token. Of course, of course. All right, tracks four and three. So four is gonna get three stacked there, and then three is gonna activate, and it's only that last of a unit of horror left, and I should be able to block all damage, hopefully killing that one, we'll see. And yeah, we do enough damage to kill it. I'm not gonna even roll again. We will be adding a red cube to the bag though. All right, so we're drawing the last token of the round. It is orange this time. And so for Crisis Adrenaline, I'm gonna move uh, Sid into this space here. And then I'll move the tennis players here. I hope that's the right call. And I think I'll move Miguel over here. I'm gonna have him at the beach in case I need to move him to another beach. All right, so three actions. First action, I'm gonna use the crowd control to move these two into this space here. And then the next one, I'm gonna do crowd control to move all four of these into this space here. And then my third action to move Johnny Deer into that space. And for a follow action, I am gonna rescue all these civilians. This is seven points worth of civilians. So it's definitely worth that rescue because I can rescue up to four using the Cheyenne Sky here. And so seven points is gonna put me at 21 points of evacuation. I only need six more to win, but I still have to survive until the end of a uh, round nine. So we're only halfway through the game on rounds, but I'm almost done with the evacuation points, which means I can spend more time scrounging for supplies and fighting than trying to rescue people. All right, so having done a follow action, we'll draw a fade card to see, no event card. And for another follow action, I will use the fireman to search. And now we have a disabled cruise ship runs ground in the bay. Your unit interviews survivors who say they know that a huge ship is hung up on the sandbar off the coast. Place the cruise ship passengers, VIP civilians into the bridge toll area on 6G along with four supplies. All right, so that places them over here. <laughs> We're just going to place these tokens right here. I know my, my standees aren't standing up. You can have them standing up, but for you to see them, I have them all laying down. And now we have these VIP civilians in this area as well. Now, once again, if you have any questions about what VIP civilians do, check the back of the quick reference guide. It says, this is a biohazard risk. Group of friendly vacationers, when things go badly on a confined cruise ship, 
Hygiene, immune systems, and overall well-being plummet dramatically. If this unit is evacuated, immediately add one red biohazard cube directly to the biohazard bag. If there are no cubes to add, then increase the biohazard level by two spaces. So yeah, that's not good. Also, it reminds me of one thing I don't know if I mentioned before, if you ever run out of biohazard cubes to add to the bag, which I only have six red ones left for this play, every time you need to add one to the bag, it, you increase the level by one, so the biohazard track starts accelerating. All right, so we now added an exhausted location marker to that location where the fireman took that action. We draw a fate card to see if we draw an event card, no event card, and we're ready to move on to the next turn. We actually have one more token in the bag, and it is the purple's turn to activate. Now for Crisis Adrenaline, I'm going to move Ralph into place here to help combat those horrors or to repair. Because he actually does repair actions very well, so he's going to move into that place there. I'm going to move the Mayor into this place here. I'll move the Fireman over here, and I think that's it. I don't think I need to move Ed right now. Ed can stay there probably, because I might have him repair as well. All right, so now we have three actions, and the first one I want to do is to crowd control these folks into this area here. Next up, I'm going to do a repair action with Ralph on the bridge. Now with Ralph, I get to draw two fate numbers instead and apply both results, one at a time, and also one is no effect. So let's see what he has. He has three and four. So first, three is going to repair one damage, and then four is going to repair as much as his admin rating, which is two, so he repairs two there. So we're down to one damage in that area, which is pretty good. Now I have one more action to do. I think I will crowd control these civilian units into this compound here. Because once you crowd control them into an area, they can enter into a compound freely. So they'll enter into the orange compound there. All right, so for follow action, I'm going to move this unit over here. So now the Cheyenne Sky is at this dock. It can be at any dock, and there's a dock here at the bottom. And that's going to cost me a fake card to see if we draw an event card. No event card again. Still going good there. And then we'll do an evacuation at that location, evacuating all four of these. And so that is actually going to give us all the remaining points that we need. Because that was another nine points. So now we're at 26 and above. We don't even have to track the points anymore. We now just have to survive till the end. So we are going in full survival mode. Now that evacuation did cost me another uh, fake card oh now we have to draw an event card for that vulnerable immune systems uh this is the same one we've seen before each player must assign one additional hit unit to one unit in their faction one wounded unit so i think the fire marshal is going to take one more point of damage thing is is the fire marshal actually has the ability to heal so if i need to start healing him i can and then for the others i will give miguel one more point of damage now he's down to two health all right so that's going to end that round the mutation which we have on the board, the Birds of Prey, would uh, heal if it had any damage, but it doesn't. We're now going to draw two cubes from the biohazard bag and see what they are. Lots of cubes in here, and we have two yellows, and that's going to put our level back up to two. Then we'll put all the tokens back in the bag, advance the round marker. We are on round five in the afternoon of that day. We're ready to start the new round. It's not a night round, so we don't have the hunger phase. We're drawing the first token, and it is a fate token, of course. And so they're going to activate, or spawn in tracks 5 and 6, and activate in 4. So still 3 each in those areas, but they're activating 4. Look at all these, oh man, look at all these stacks here. So first, this one's going to activate, moving 1 space, and it's going to end in combat with Sid here. And that's not going to be good for Sid. Sid is likely going to die. We'll see. He can, he can possibly do his last stand. Now this one's going to move... Let's see, it has six, so it's going to move two spaces here. And this one's going to go three spaces, one, two, and three. All right, so now we have to do combat. Poor Sid. Let's see if he can go down fighting. <laughs> He's going to roll two here. And so let's see what he gets. All right, so he blocks one damage. He does one damage, so we'll remove a token here. But here's the thing. He's in the field. The field is just going to do a crazy amount of damage. We have uh, seven here. And that means three points of damage against Sid. He only had one hit point left. So now we're going to go into a last stand. And so we have to draw a fate card here and see if he survives the last stand. The number on this fate card, we're going to correspond it to its bravery value. And so let's see. It's a three. It's a three. So he survives that attack, which means he gets to go to an adjacent area, survive, and he goes back to one hit point remaining. 
Now, one thing I want to remind you about Last Stands is that he can't move north. So he can't move towards the zombie spawn points when doing a last stand. He has to move back or laterally if there's connection. So the only way he could have moved was this way, but it was a good way anyways. And we do add a red cube to the bag for close combat with a mutation stack. And we're ready for the next turn. And so here we go. We get another fate. Oh man, I'm not going to let me act this turn, are they? All right, reanimate it. So draw a fate number, okay? Add two tiles to each Murder of Horrors unit located in that track number equaling the drawn fate number. All right, so track number three. There are none. Wow. That worked out really well. But on the flip side, we have to activate tracks one, two, and three. Okay, here we go. So track number one here. This stack of six is going to move two spaces, one and two. This stack is going to move one, two, and three. Now this stack is gonna move one space, but we have to draw a fate number here to see where it's gonna move. It's gonna move five, which is actually on the other side here. So those people dodged a bullet there, I guess. And then the birds of prey is gonna move, all right? So the birds of prey, once again, we're gonna draw a fate number to determine which track it's gonna to move to. So it's gonna to move to track number six, and then another fate number here, and we're gonna add three to that value. If it's night, we add four. And so for this mutation, the birds of prey, it's gonna go four spaces down from the track. So we go to the spawn point and we go one, two, three, and four. And the only reason why we didn't draw a faint number here is because it's moving past that location and there's nothing that was gonna stop it. So there's no, no reason to draw a faint number. Although technically I suppose you should just discard a fate card to account for that. We still have to activate this one here, which goes one, two, and three like so. All right, so next token is the orange. So orange faction's going. Let's see, for Crisis Adrenaline, what do I want to do? I don't think I'm going to move anybody for Crisis Adrenaline. We'll just go straight into the actions here. And so the first action, I'm going to do a repair with Johnny Deer there. We're going to draw a card. It's a three. That'll let me repair one, which is all I needed to do to repair that. So that was my first action. Then we'll crowd control everybody into that location there. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and move in there as my third action, just to be on the safe side. Actually, I think I moved one too many tokens here. So there we go. Now on that move, I did get all those supplies, which is unfortunate for the, uh, for the purple team. They need supplies too, but I need more because I have citizens and much more damage. I don't want to take any more damage. All right, so now for a follow-up action, I want to get people in place. I'm going to move Ed using his vehicular movement, and he can actually take a person with him. So we're going to take the hero of the day with him. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're gonna stop moving there. That's gonna have me draw a fake card for the follow action, no event card. And I'm half tempted to move him in the place with the birds of prey, but maybe I should wait. So I'm not gonna do any more follow actions. I just noticed here that I have too many people in this place, and I think I've done this one other time. You've probably already noticed this, but you can't have uh, three people in one place at one time. So I'm going to put the doctor back over here and uh, yeah, that was my fault. So I'm gonna leave the doctor there. That might cause the doctor to lose, but, but sorry about making that mistake. I, I think I did that earlier over here at the docks or something like that. I'll probably have notes in the comments about that. All right, so drawing the next token here and we have the orange team going. Now for Crisis Adrenaline, I think I'll move Phil into this space here and probably the tennis team into this space here. All right, so now we have three actions and the first action is to move these civilians into this space using his admin action. Then to evacuate all of these here. And so all four of these get evacuated off the bridge or basically you use the crowd control action to evacuate them off the bridge. And so that was really good. Now I don't need the points for that. And that's actually gonna cause a red biohazard cube to be added to the bag because of those VIP civilians. Those specific ones add a red cube to the bag. And then next I'm gonna do a search action with Miguel up here. And so it says boxes of food and fuel surrounded by burly guards. Choose one option, run the gauntlet, check your close combat rating, the number in the yellow. And so that would allow him to place four supplies in the area and take one hit or negotiate them with them and check the admin rating. And with his admin rating of three, he would just get one supply in that area. Now, if I choose to negotiate with them and the Jiffy Jeff's auto service civilians unit is evacuated or on the map, increase the reward by two supplies. Well, th that's the thing. I did rescue them. They're actually in my rescue supply. So I'll do that instead. That puts three supplies in that area 
and I, I don't have to take a hit for that. Now this will exhaust that area, and I don't think I'm gonna take any follow actions this time. All right, drawing the next token here. Let's see. Oh, the Doom token. Here we go. Acquiring the scent. Draw a fate number. All right, so here's our fate number of two. All horror units on the track will move to an adjacent connected area, but only if that area has non-horror units in it. Horrors units that do move will conduct a close combat attack. If there are two eligible areas, the area on the higher number track is chosen. If there are no units in the elig eligible areas, then this er event has no effect. Okay, so first of all, that means this stack is going to move into here, and we're going to have a close combat with the Shore Patrol. This stack is going to move into here. Phil King is going to get attacked. Okay, so first, Phil King has a melee combat of two. Let's see what we get. And we block one damage, but there was actually too many guys here. He was going to take two points of damage, so he only takes one. Now, that was Phil's first hit, or his first damage, so not too bad. But we do add a red cube to the bag. Next up, the Shore Patrol is going to attack. And so they're going to roll for two. And if they get hit, I think they <laughs> this might kill them. Yeah, there's two and a half points of damage here. So rounded up making three. So if he doesn't block damage, he's dead. Oh, no. Not good at all. So he's dead. And we're adding another tile on here. And then we add a red cube to the bag as well. All right, so next turn here, let's see. We have another fate card, of course. And they're spawning in track number four. We are really getting low on these tiles. There's so many tiles on the board. This is not good. All right, now Surge, draw a fate number, of course. So oh, here it goes. Number two is gonna be activated twice, track number two. Okay, so first is this one is moving one space and it's gonna be close combat with the doctor here. This one's gonna move one, two, three. So first we do the close combat with the doctor. He can only roll two. He's probably gonna die. He does one point of damage. He's gonna take way too much damage. He's dead. Goodbye, doc. Uh, poor doc. He took like five points of damage or something like that. I didn't even calculate it. It was way too much. <laughs> then we add a red cube to the bag. Things are not looking good, guys. <laughs> Things are not looking good. I may not make it past the second day. <laughs> this is not good. Actually, I forgot to check for last stand because the doc could have last stand. Let's see what happens. And it's a two. He does have last stand, so he survives and he goes one space away, but chances are he's gonna die soon. So now he only has one health left. So we'll see what happens. But now we have our second activation. This whole stack moves. And then on top of that, this stack is gonna go one, two, three. We'll discard a fate card to count for which direction it goes. And now we have an entire stack of like 12, I think 12, maybe 14 here. <laughs> Let's see. Looks like seven. Yeah, 14. 14 units or 14 stack here. And so they're going to do a close combat attack. All right, so we'll have the doctor do the combat. So he's going to roll two against that. And it's like three and a half points of damage. So chances are he's not going to survive. But there we go. He does one damage and blocks one damage. He's going to do one damage to it. And then we're going to have a last stand. And so we'll draw a fake card here. And he does not survive that. So he's dead because this is higher than his bravery rating. So he's gone. That's going to add a tile back to the track here. And we'll add a red cube to the bag. All right. So we draw another token. It's the purple activation this time. For a crisis movement, I'm going to move the mayor in place here. And then I think I'll move Ed a couple spaces here to try and get him towards a safer location, especially with this compound here being able to attack and stuff. And we'll also move the fireman down here. And I think I'll actually move Ralph into this place. All right, so our first action of the turn is we are gonna use a search token with Ralph, see what we get. And we have Motor City Madmen. The lead elements of your unit have reported that they are pinned down by a sudden storm of arrows being directed at them. They soon discover that the assailants are students from Uncle Ted's archery school. This is a famous institution founded by the wacky Uncle Teddy Bear, originally from Detroit. Place Uncle Ted's archery school VIP civilians unit into this area along with three supplies, and then exhaust that area. All right, so we got some more supplies here, 
and a new unit of civilians. Now it looks like they have ranged attack. So consulting our quick reference here, these civilians are armed with bows and arrows and thus are considered to have range combat rating of two only. A player may use a combat action to have this unit issue range combat attack, just like an NPC unit, and it doesn't cost one supplies to do so. Okay, so that's not too bad. So with that in mind, I might as well use a ranged attack at the Birds of Prey and start whittling it down. So we're gonna roll two against it. And it's one damage. So we add a hit cube onto the mutation sheet where the Birds of Prey is at. And I think I'll do that again. So we'll use our third action to attack. And it's a critical hit. With the shield counting as an extra damage since it's a ranged attack. So we have two more damage. Let's see if we can go for a third one. Oh, check that out. That actually killed off the Birds of Prey. Yes. Oh, that was really good. We might have a fighting chance after all because that was going to be a problem later. All right, now for any follow actions. I almost feel like I should abandon the tennis players here and move them away. So I'm going to go one, two into this space here with the hospital where they can start getting healed. But what that's going to do is that th that's going to cause an overrun here. This is probably not the best choice, but it's going to cause an overrun. And so with the Coast Guard Station getting an overrun token, which looks like this here. It is permanently compromised, so I can't do a rescues and that sort of thing out of it. On top of that, we have to add three points to the overrun track, and that's our first three points, but if we get to eight, we lose the game. Furthermore, this entire stack of tiles gets removed from the game, so they can't be used to spawn new Murder of Horrors stacks, which, as a reminder, if we can't spawn any stacks like to the full amount that they need to be spawned, then we get overrun points for that. So that is not good. I also have to draw a fate card to see if I don't have to draw an event card and there's no event there. And I think I'll do one more follow action with Sid and I'm going to exhaust that location to use the contaminate or decontamination action which lets me decontaminate by two so the biohazard track goes back down. And so it actually brings it back down to zero so I'm good on that track. Now that's gonna draw another fate card and now we draw an event card, that's unfortunate. All right, here we go. Draw three cubes from the biohazard bag and apply their effects on the, to the track, then place those drawn cubes back in the bag. <laughs> okay. With all these red cubes in there, there's only one red cube left to be added to this bag, so this is just going to be bad. All right, so one green is zero, yellow is one, red is two, so the biohazard track moves up three points. All right, so we draw the final turn token from the bag, and it is a, the purple team again. As for crisis management, I think I'll move him two spaces here, and then I'll move Ralph two spaces into here, and that'll give us the supplies for that movement. And I think that's it. We'll go into actions. We'll use the ranged combat of this uh, NPC again, and we're going to try and shoot that stack of zombies, the one space away there. And no damage. But then we're going to use Ed with his vehicular movement, moving him one, two, three, four spaces in here. But I'm dropping him off and then five and six into here. I think that was the right call. And I guess I'll use the range combat again. So we're going to roll. We deal one damage to the stack. Not too bad. But now that's going to end the round. All right, since the mutation died, we don't have to regenerate it. But we do have to draw two cubes from the bag. And let's see. Oh, three more points on the biohazard level. That puts us all the way up to six. And so we are getting close. 17 is game over. And then we're going to add the turn order tokens back in the bag. And we're moving on to round six, which is another night round. All right, so this is the start of a new night round, which means we have the hunger phase to start off with. And so it's going to cost me one supply each for each of my faction's units, as well as one supply for the civilians that are in the orange compound. So on the purple's faction, uh, they're actually down to four units because one died. And so it only costs those four supplies. And then the orange faction still has all five units. So we'll deduct those as well as one for the civilians in the compound. So thankfully I didn't suffer any more damage. Now I kind of want to give an update to where I'm at in this game. So we're at round six and so we have three rounds left. Well, four rounds because we're counting this round. Four rounds left to survive. Our biohazard level is at six now. And again, 17 is a loss. Our overrun is at three and eight is a loss. <laughs> but our evacuation points are at 26 and above. And so uh, if we make it to the end of round nine, we are gonna win. All right, so moving on, we start off by drawing our first token of the game. As another reminder about the night phase, each of the zombies get a plus one movement during the night phase. So let's see what happens. We draw a fate card to begin. 
And so, yeah, the zombies get to go first. Here we go. And it is spawning on track number six. Oh, man. That track six is just loaded up with zombies right now. So we have this huge stack. And then we're going to be activating tracks one and two. So this one first gets activated. Now this is a stack of six. And so it's going to move two spaces, but plus one because of the night phase. So one, two, and three. It's going to end in close combat. And that's kind of unfortunate. He only has two hit points. So we'll see how that goes. And then this other stack here is going to end up moving four spaces. So we'll draw a fade card to see which bridge it goes down. Number four puts it down this side. So one, two, three, and then four spaces here. Now, as of right now, there's nothing in track number two because that got overrun. And so we don't have to worry about activating anything there, but we go on to combat with the fireman. Now the fireman gets to roll four dice. And if he doesn't block anything, he's going to go into a last stand or die. We'll see. Oh man. So we got one critical hit. And so we get to reroll this. Let's see what we get. Nothing. Oh, that is too bad. So the stack takes one damage and then he's going to take two damage, which is going to put him at a last stand mode. However, there is one rule that we haven't talked about yet with the last stand and it illustrated in this particular scenario. See, normally with the last stand, if you complete a last stand, he, ha he has to move one space away, either adjacent, east or west or south. And at this point right here, he can't do either. There's no connection here. There's no way south. He can't go north according to the rules. So he actually dies. No, we lost the fireman. And so that's going to cause the stack to gain a tile for eliminating a unit. On top of that, we're going to add our one and final red cube to the bag. Now, what that means is anytime that we need to add a cube to the bag, we're actually going to be advancing the biohazard track. All right, so we're moving on to the next turn, drawing another token. We have another fate token. If it couldn't get any worse, it is. And let's see. All right, spawning on track number two. So they get a stack again. We're almost out of horrors. There's like six left, maybe five. There's not much left, so that's not good. And we're activating track number five. All right, so this stack here is going to move a total of three spaces. So one, two, and three. And it's going to end in close combat with that civilian unit. We'll do that in just a sec. This one's going to move four. One, two, three, and four. All right, so the civilians are going to die. That stack is going to get one. And then we're going to have to move the biohazard track one space. I have to tell you, I am in a really bad spot here. I don't think I'll last more than two rounds. We'll see how it goes. All right, so for the next turn, we have doom <laughs> the event card gets drawn and let's see what we get run aground the coast guard cutter unit has hit some rocks draw a fate number and apply okay so here's our fate number fate number is six sunk remove the unit from the game so the Alyssa here is gone <laughs> that was removed from the game oh well we you know that wasn't actually too bad we've evacuated most of the civilians so we didn't have to worry about that too much and we're drawing our next token here and this time we get to activate the orange units. And so for our crisis adrenaline, I'm going to move fill one space here. And then I will move Johnny Deer back into this space here. Has to end its movement because of the zombies there. And then I think I'll move Sid out of this place. I'm not sure where to go with him. Maybe just to this one space here. All right, so we have three actions for this activation. And I want to do some ranged attacks for sure. You know, Phil can do ranged attacks, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a one ranged attack with Phil. That's going to cost one supplies from the orange team. And let's see. Two critical hits. Whoa. Actually, he has a plus one uh, combat rating because of his ability. So we get to roll one more. <laughs> How did that happen? Three critical hits. We get to re-roll all these dice. Let's see if we get anything good. And of course, nothing, right? <laughs> I mean, we got three tiles back. That's good. So that's going to, you know, make it so I don't overrun anytime soon. So that was a really good shot. Now, I think I should attack again because I need to get rid of this before it gets down to the docks and causes an overrun. So I'm going to spend one more supply rolling again. And we got one hit. All right. That's, you know. I guess that's better than nothing. Now the ranged attacks don't, you know, add cubes to the bag. So that's why I'm doing those right now. Because I think that's going to be helpful. So we've done two actions. And so we've done two actions. And maybe I should do a third action. 
I'm thinking I'll do the search token here with uh, Sid and see what we get. And it says, gun locker discovered. If this area is the first precinct, which is 3G, and it's, uh, it's not. 3G is over here. If this area is any other building area, place two pistols markers in the area and your unit may immediately pick one up. Also place one supplies in the area. If it's any other type than just one pistols marker. All right, so we get to use the pistols markers. And so these are special markers that now give those units uh, ranged attacks. And so I'll place it right here. And so he now has a ranged attack. Another one goes in this area as well as one supply. Again, you're gonna need supplies to use those. And then we also need an exhausted location token for that area. So that actually wasn't too bad. Now Sid can shoot enemies from far away. Now we go into a follow action. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for a follow action. You know, I think I'm just not gonna do anything for a follow action. I don't even wanna risk getting an event card right now. All right, so we're gonna draw the next token and it is the purple faction this time. And let's see, we'll do crisis movement, and I think I'll move him over there. I'm also going to move Ed into this space here, which is going to give him one supplies and the pistol. And I think that's it for the crisis adrenaline. Now I have some actions, and I think I'm going to utilize the hero of the day. We're going to start shooting at this one here. And so this one has a total of seven tiles, but we need to start eliminating those. The hero of the day gets three shots, so let's see what we get and one damage, so one down. We're gonna, I think we'll just do all three actions with him. I think that's the right call. Oh, check that out. Three damage with two critical hits. Oh, let's see, four, five damage. Still get to roll this critical hit. Oh my goodness, six. Wow, I think I just eliminated that entire thing. Man, that hero of the day really is making a difference. And so with that, I need to position the hero of the day in a better spot. And so I think I'm gonna go one, two, three for his movement, and that's gonna end the, the purple faction's movement. So I m might just have a chance. Now, we're definitely gonna lose this bottom corner to an overrun. I don't think there's anything I can do about that, but we might just have a chance here. I am thinking of doing a follow action with the orange team though, and uh, doing a ranged attack against this stack. I think that's a good shot. So we're going to spend one supplies. We're going to roll two dice. Let's see what we get. And nothing. Nothing, of course. Wow. Now we have to draw a fake card. No event card. So we're good. We're moving on to the next turn. All right. It's the purple's action again. So that's good. Which means we can use the hero of the day again to try and take down this tower. All right. So let's see, three and, and let's roll, nothing. <laughs> uh, well, we get one damage from that because the shield counts as damage in the ranged attack. So that wasn't too bad. Second action, let's see. One critical hit, okay. And then nothing. <laughs> so that, that was not good. So we got one more. I guess we're gonna do a final attack there. Come on, hero of the day. One hit, aw. But you know what, we took out several tiles. And again, I'm trying to get those tiles back into the supply so we don't have overruns triggered by not being able to spawn uh, stacks. So I think that was a good call. Of course, we're trying to defend areas here, but this one's gonna get overrun, but maybe we can defend these four lanes here. We'll see. As far as a follow action, I think I will shoot again with the tennis players, spending one supply, rolling two dice. Again, if the tennis players get a critical hit, they are going to do uh, actually two damage instead of one. And check that out. Two damage, three damage, and four, five, <laughs> five and a half. All right. So we eliminated that entire unit. All right. Things don't look so bleak right now, but, you know, I probably spoke too soon because one of these tiles is a fate tile. Oh, we got the orange activation again. Okay. And so for my Crisis Adrenaline, I'm gonna move Sid into this space and get him there ahead of time so he can use the uh, decontamination action the next round because we need to start decontaminating soon. And then I'll use the Crisis Adrenaline to move Miguel into this space, and I think that's it. Now we have three actions. So my first action is to use the emergency room at the hospital here to heal one hit from the tennis players. 
And so now they have three health left, so that's good. And then we're going to use the search action with Miguel. And so we have trapped office staff. Word has it that the Greenport Utility Board was meeting when the storm struck and they could be still be in the building. Place the Greenport Utility Board VIP civilians in the Island Wide Light and Power Area, which is 3H, and along with one supplies. And so they get placed here. And so these ones, there's not too much special rules for them. Basically, if this location is not compromised when you save them they're worth four points if it is compromised when you save them it's worth two points so so that is the stipulation with that unit but it puts some uh, supplies on the board now i do need to make an attack action now because now that they're in that spot this stack might hit them so i'm gonna fire at that stack with phil here which means i'm spending one more supply i'm getting low on supplies but we have a ways to go and we're gonna roll dice here and we do one hit Actually, he gets a third die. I forgot that again. Uh, still nothing. All right. So he does one damage to them. Hopefully that's enough to uh, keep them from getting destroyed later. We'll see. Now, as far as the follow action goes, I don't think I'm going to do any follow actions. I guess I could do a search action up here. And maybe I should. And so we'll do search action. And it says gas cans and soda bottles. If this area is Tom's gas and go, 1G, which it's not. If it's the town dump... It's not. If it's any other area, place one Molotov cocktail marker in that area and your unit may, may immediately pick it up. Okay. So here we go. We have a Molotov cocktail and we'll place it with Ralph. We might as well give it to him. All right. So at this point, I want to talk a little bit about those special items, the pistols and the Molotov cocktails. Now, you can only ever use those twice. And you can use them as a ranged attack, which means that it's not going to cause a biohazard cube to be added to the bag. Now they only have two uses each. Their combat value is shown in the number in the upper right hand corner. Your first use will have you flip it over. The second use is gonna be less powerful and once you use it the second time, you'll discard this completely. If your unit dies while wielding one of these weapons, it just drops in that location. Now there is actually a rule about arming some civilians, but that's not gonna come up in this playthrough. But I just want to let you know that there is situations where you can actually arm civilians by having them pick up those weapons. Now, one thing I'm unsure of, and I'll put a note right here <laughs> as you're watching this here, as I find out the answer to this question. But the rules state that you can resolve a ranged combat with one of these items without using a combat action. So I don't know if that's a free action you can do or not. I'm not going to play it as a free action here, uh, but if I'm wrong... I'll let you know right now in this uh, video if I'm wrong and also I'll pin it in the comments. Now the cool thing about the Molotov cocktail is that it does damage in an area. So if there's an area that has multiple horror units, so like a stack of zombies and a mutation, then the Molotov cocktail will damage both of them. All right, so now we have to draw a fade card to see if my follow action caused anything and there's no event card. And then we move on to the final token of the round, which is going to be a fate token. All right, so let's see what happens. Here we go. We're spawning on track three. So adding a stack of three and then activating track two again. All right, so we kind of cleared up track two a little bit, but this one is going to move one, two, three, four spaces because one extra space for the night phase. All right, so that's going to end the round. Now we are in the night phase, so that means we're going to be removing all exhausted location markers. So that's nice. There was actually supposed to be one here as well, but all those get removed. Now there's no mutations that get to regenerate. We're gonna draw two cubes from the bag and we have a green and a red. So that means we're gonna move two on the track. That puts us at a level of nine, which is gonna cause us to spawn stacks of four instead of three. So we need to reduce that. Again, 17 is gonna be a game over. And then we're putting the turn order tokens back in the bag, advancing the round marker. And now we are on the morning of the final day, so three rounds left. Now we still have three actions per activation in this round. Next round it will be two, and the last round it will be one. So we have not too many actions left, and only a few rounds to survive. And I think we're in a better place than we've been yet. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. All right, so the first turn of the day is going to be a fate card, of course. And so we're spawning in track three, and we're spawning, or sorry, we're activating track number four and that was four tiles added to the stack this time so now track four gets activated this one is going to move three spaces so one we'll draw a fate card to see which way it goes and it's going to go on number three so two and then three spaces here 
Next one goes one, two, three right here. Then we're on to the next turn. Let's see. It's the orange faction. It's time for them to move. And so I think I'll do Crisis Adrenaline for this one here, moving two spaces, picking up those supplies along the way. I probably should have picked them up earlier. That was my mistake. I'm also going to do Crisis Adrenaline to move the tennis players up here. And I think that's it. All right, so we have three activations. So the first thing I want to do is fire with the tennis players. And so it's going to cost one ammo. We're going to roll two dice. Let's see what we get. Oh, nothing, of course. All right, so the next action, we're going to use the pistol on Sid here. Again, I don't know if the pistol is a free action or not. I'm going to uh, take it as it's not a free action, that it actually takes an action point. So we're going to fire with the pistol. I get to roll two dice as a ranged combat, flipping that tile over because it has two uses. Here we go. All right, two hits. Not bad at all. So we'll take two off that stack. And I think I'm going to use it again. I only get to roll one die, and this gets discarded. So we're hoping for one hit. One hit. Yes. Again, ranged attack with a shield is a hit, and we eliminate that stack. That was really good. All right, so that was my three actions. I'm not sure if I want to do any follow actions at this point. I don't think I want to. So we're going to leave it like that. We're going to draw a new token. Let's see what happens. And it's the orange again. Okay. Now I'm going to leave Sid here because he's going to do the decontaminate action here. I'm probably going to attack again with the tennis players. I'll leave them there. So I'll leave everybody there. So no crisis drilling move. We'll go on to actions. We'll do the decontaminate action. That brought my biohazard level back down to seven. And so I only spawn three tiles at a time now. That, of course, exhausts that location. And then I'll do the search action here with the tennis players. And let's see. Crashed field truck found in flames. All right, so we check our unit's bravery level, and it's three. And it says, your people recover a few cans of gas. If the unit has an admin rating of three, which it does, it has a four, so we place three supplies in this area, if not place two. So three supplies, that's really good. Now, on top of that, uh, there's no exhausted location marker on this card. So that's not too bad. We can use the search action there if we want to again. And now I'm going to attack with Phil King against that one stack there. We'll spend one unit of supplies, rolling three dice. We should be able to kill it, right? Re oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> wow. Didn't kill it. Wasted ammo. Wasted my action. All right. Do we have any follow actions we want to do? I could do a search action in this space, as well as uh, gain supplies. So maybe I should gain supplies. It would only give me one supply, but we have to think about nighttime at the end of the, of the day here. And so maybe I should gain supplies here. So we'll gain supplies, exhausting that location. It's only one, but I hope that was worth it. We're drawing a fake card to see if it was worth it. Ah, <laughs> no event card. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to do any other follow actions. So we're drawing the next token here and it's the doom token. All right. Here's our event card. March of the wild eyed rats. Oh no, a mutation comes up. So we have to draw a fate number. Spawn the wild-eyed rats mutation standee directly into the lowest lettered building area on, the, on that track number. So track number six. And so it's going to spawn all the way down here. Wow. That is not good. It says if the Latimer Pest Control Civilians Unit is on the map or evacuated, then they'll do one damage to the standee. All right. So let's see. Yeah, I do have the Latimer family. So that was good. So we're going to deal one damage to that. Now, one thing to note about the rats is when they conduct a close combat, players must add two biohazard cubes to the bag, which means since there are no cubes left right now, that'll cause that level to increase by two. So that's not good. All right, we're drawing for the next token. Let's see. We got another fate token here. All right, so we're spawning in tracks five and six. Now, we did bring the level down, so it's only three in each of those areas. But look at this stack that keeps growing here. This is not good. We're going to have to get the hero of the day into that space and uh, get ready to kill things there. And then we're going to activate track number four, which is just this one here, which will move three spaces and we'll uh, move it to here. We'll discard one fate card for that. All right. Then we're drawing our next token here and it's another fate one, of course. And so no spawn, but acti activating tracks one and six. Oh no. All right. So activating track one here is going to result in a close combat with this civilian unit and cause an overrun. So we'll deal with that in just a moment, but we have to activate track six as well. So we have combats 
in here, here, and then this is going to move, this huge stack is going to move one space. So first let's resolve the one in track one. So the civilian unit dies, where we'd add a tile to that stack. We'd increase the, uh, the biohazard level by one because I have no more cubes to add to the bag. And then the stack is going to cause an overrun. Now the overrun value for that location is two. And once again, those zombie units are removed from the pool. So they can't be used to spawn any zombies. That is not a good. All right, now we have other combats. So we have this combat here. Now the unfortunate thing about this combat is we're likely going to lose Miguel because he's in the last space here and uh, he's currently only has two hit points left. So unless he rolls so well as to block hit points, he's gonna end up dying. So we're gonna roll three. Now he blocks one and we have two critical hits. This actually might turn out okay. We'll see. Uh, so he does three damage. Oh, wow. Hold on. He did three damage. That put it at four damage total against the rats. He's going to kill the rats, but he might die because of it. Yeah, because he's going to take three damage. He can't do a last stand because it's in the last space here. So he can't evacuate to a, a previous space and there's no side connection. So he dies in battle, but kills off the rats. That was actually really good. Now, the rats, when they conduct a close combat, are adding two cubes to the bag. I don't have any cubes, so I'm increasing that track by two. So now the buyer hazard level is at 10, and we're getting dangerously close to a game over there. All right, so we still have one more combat, and it's between Johnny Deer and this one single tile here. So Johnny Deer is going to roll three dice. Now, he only has one hit point left himself, so we're hoping for a defense. No defense and no damage. Oh, that is not good. All right. So first of all, we had a close combat, which is going to add a cube to the bag or one level. So now we're at level 11. He's going to do a last stand. <laughs> so we're drawing a fake card to see if it matches his bravery level or is less than his bravery level. And his bravery level is only two. So, ah, oh, he didn't make it either. He's dead. And so on top of that, that's going to add another token to that stack there. And here's the thing. They are dangerously close to that bridge. If they overrun that bridge, we're going to lose the game because that's going to increase the overrun track by six points. All right. Wow, that was detrimental. Now, I think I'm out of fate tokens, so I have a chance to fight back here. But we are down to three units in each faction. All right, so we draw and it's the purple faction. And with that, we are going to conduct a ranged attack using these civilians here, attacking these guys here. And that's going to be a ranged attack of two. I suppose I could use my Molotov cocktail, but I think I'll just do the ranged attack here. Let's see. One critical hit. We're hoping for another half heart or a heart or a shield or nothing. <laughs> so that was one. And then I'm going to do that attack again because I just don't, I don't want to lose here. Oh no, that was another miss. I guess uh, we'll do one more attack. Let's see. All right, that was a hit. So they are dead. Well, that was all three of my attacks. Do I want to do a follow action? No, I don't think so. So we're going to move on to the next turn. And let's see. It's the purple units again. All right, I may want to do a crisis movement with this. So I'm going to do a crisis movement, placing Ralph here. And then I'll move Ed into this space here since he has a gun. And I think that's it. Now we'll go into the actions. We're going to use the hero of the day to shoot this stack here. So that's three dice. Let's see. That's one hit. I suppose that's okay. Might use him again. Should we use him again? Yeah, let's use him again. And that's two hits. I could roll again, but we don't need to. That stack is done. So that was two actions. Now I'm going to use the de decontaminate action to bring the biohazard level down by one, adding an exhausted location marker to that location. Now, as far as follow actions go, I suppose I should try and shoot this one with the tennis players. We're going to spend one supplies to do so. That's going to be two dice, hoping for some critical hits. Well, we got two damage off of that. Two shields is two damage. Not bad. But now we have to draw a fake card and no event. Okay. And I don't think I'll do any other follow actions. So we're going to move on to the next turn and we have no more. Ooh, this is the end of the round. Okay. 
So now we draw from the biohazard bag. If we draw two reds, that's gonna be really detrimental. Oh, a yellow and a green, that puts us up to 11. We're doing okay there. Uh, we probably wanna be lower, but we're doing okay. And so we're putting our turn order tokens back in the bag and advancing the round marker. All right, folks, two rounds left. And this may be the farthest I've gotten. Well, I've gotten to round nine, but I mean, I feel better about this than any other game. All right, so we're drawing a token here. Let's see what we get. And it's a fate, okay. And so they're gonna spawn in track six, which is gonna be four, and then activating tracks one and two. And there's only one that gets activated. This one moves in and it's gonna initiate close combat with the tennis players. Now I do wanna remind you that in round eight here, we only have two actions per activation. And so now we're gonna roll. Let's see, we wanna block some damage, but we actually have enough health, so we're not worried about it. Critical hit, and then another critical hit, and nothing. So we do take one damage. This one dies. We're gonna advance the biohazard level by one. And so all in all, not, not horrible. These tracks are clear though, so that's good. Now we're gonna draw another token. This time it's purple activating. I don't think I'll do crisis movement. I guess I can move the mayor into a different place. So we'll go one and two there. I'm gonna use Ed to fire. And so he's gonna use his pistol. We'll flip that over here. And that's gonna do two dice, let's see. That's two hits, not bad at all, all right? And then we're gonna use this pistol again, so that's our second action. Rolling one die, and it's a critical hit, so that stack is done. All right, not bad at all. Now I have one more action. Maybe I should move the hero of the day into this space so he's in a building in case this gets activated. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so now we're drawing a token, and it's a fate token. Here we go, spawning track six, another four there and then activating track one, which has nothing on it. And just wanna let you know that it says that, you know, if there are no horrors located on the track that is activated, nothing happens on that track, and the whole group is required by these rules to do a little dance. If you haven't noticed yet, I've been doing little dances here and there. Uh, I'm sorry you couldn't get them on the screen, but I did them anyways. All right, so we're drawing another token, let's see. And it is the Doom token. Here we go, dazed and confused. Many civilians are confused about who to trust and therefore trust no one. Draw a fate number, all right. So we have fate number six. In any area on that track which contains both player units and civilian units together, a bloody fight breaks out. In each of those areas eliminate one civilian unit and each player unit takes one hit. Boats and helicopters are unaffected. Now thankfully, there are no areas where that is happening. So that actually didn't affect me at all. So do I have to do another dance? All right, so drawing a card or a token and we get another fate one, here we go. All right, oh no, the reanimated. Okay, draw a fate number and then add two tiles to each murder of horror units located in that uh, track number equaling the fate number. So track number six is gonna get two in each of these stacks. Man, these stacks are huge. There's so many tiles in the stack right here. All right, and activating tracks one, two, and three. Okay, so this one's gonna go one, two, ending its turn right there in combat with that civilian. And this one is only gonna move one space, I think. Yeah, so it only moves one space. Again, tracks one and two don't get activated. I have to do two dances for that. Sorry, I'll stop with the dance jokes. Okay, so now the civilian's gonna die because of the combat there. That horror unit is gonna get an additional tile and the biohazard level moves up by one. All right, next turn we have the orange, orange is gonna activate. Now do a crisis adrenaline move with the tennis players moving into this space, automatically picking up these supplies here because we need some more ammo. And I think I will do a move with Sid here going one and then probably here for two. I think that's it, all right. So now for actions, I'm gonna use the tennis players to shoot at that stack. So we're gonna spend one supply for that. Rolling two dice, hoping for a critical hit. And we got one, that does two damage, that's gonna take out that stack, all right. Next up, we're gonna use, next we're gonna use the search to see what we get, and we have Bellport Yacht Club Fleet arrives to help. All right, if players collectively discard two supplies, you may immediately evacuate up to two civilian units from any beach or docks area for free. If they discard three supplies, it can be three, and then four can be four. 
Now I don't know that I, <laughs> I know this is this is bad. I don't know if I want to try and uh, rescue anybody. I actually don't think I have anybody in any beach or docks areas, so I don't even need to use this card, which is unfortunate because that actually exhausts that location and doesn't give me anything. Now I do believe earlier on accident I had done three actions for the purple faction when I should have only done two. So I'll correct that by in the next purple's turn only doing one action. So sorry about that mistake. And uh, we just done two actions with the orange, so that's going to end their turn. I'm not going to do any follow actions. We're going to draw a token here, and we'll see. It is the orange's faction again. And so I will use a forge action here to gain two supplies and exhaust that location. And then I will do a search here with Phil King. And so we have from dusk till dawn. Your unit walks into an abandoned nightclub, the tequila twister. In the dark, they spot bodies slowly riding. Oh, my goodness. All right, moving on. Uh, suddenly the entire crowd spins towards your people and attacks immediately spawn three murder of horror tiles into your area and it inflicts one extra hit than normal during its close combat right now oh no that's not good now i don't have to exhaust that location of the on that card but we do go into close combat with phil now phil has he has three health left so he can sustain two hits but we're going to roll two here and see what happens critical hit and one so that's good. All right. Oh, didn't get any more damage, but two damage. Now we have to increase the biohazard level by one, and now it's 14. Oh, it's so close. And then Phil is going to take two hits. All right, so that ends our two actions there. We're going to draw our final token. It's the purple activation. Again, with the purple activation, I'm going to skip one action because I think I did three earlier. Now I'm going to use Crisis Adrenaline to move the mayor into this space here. And I think I'll use Crisis Adrenaline with Ed here to move him into this space. Actually, I'm going to move Ed from this location down here so he can pick up these supplies for free. Then I'm going to do the single forge action here, exhausting that location and gaining one more supply. So now we have a total of four supplies. All right, so that's going to end the round. Now we got two dangerously close to the biohazard level. We are at 14 here. So if I draw a yellow and a red, we are going to lose the game or two reds. Oh, lucky, lucky, lucky draw. Now it's at 16. We are going to have to deal with that though. We need to do some uh, decontamination. So we have to find some places to do that. And there's not a lot of places left to do that. So I should have probably paid better attention to that track. All right, so we are on round nine, the final round of the game. We have to survive this. We have one action for each activation. The zombies are going to move one extra space. We do have to do our hunger phase of spending supplies for each faction unit. All right, so now <laughs> here we are drawing our final tokens of the game. Fate token first, of course. And so tracks one and two are going to spawn and three and four are going to activate. Now I have to tell you that there are only one tile, one tiles left in the supply, which means that if I have to spawn any more, that's going to cause overrun points. So not good at all. And three more overrun points and we lose the game. All right, so now we're activating tracks three and four. Phil is going to be in combat with one. And then this one's going to move two spaces. So one and we'll draw to see which way it moves. And so it's a five, so it moves up here. All right, so Phil is in close combat, but I have to tell you, it doesn't matter what happens here. It is going to cause the game to end because at this point, that was a close combat with a unit adding one to the biohazard which is going to increase it to 17 and game over oh so close i almost had this in the bag i didn't spend enough time decontaminating that was my fault i probably should have done that here instead of forging because i didn't need that extra supply so mismanaged my supplies and everything oh so close and so there you have it that was the tutorial and solo playthrough of the plum island horror by herman lutman and gmt games i do want to remind you that if i have made any rules errors i will put those in the comments or there will have been captions on the screen so look for those now i do thank you for sticking through and and watching this this took me uh three days of recording to record i think a total of six hours of recording so it's quite the project and i won't tell you how many hours of editing but here we are at the end of the video. We have made it through. Well, I lost, I lost. I've lost every single game, but I have to tell you, I've lost because I think I didn't play as well as I should have. And so it really always feels like my fault. 
but it's a very thematic, very fun game. I, I just love this game. I'm gonna do a review soon, so I will talk about this game. There are a few things that I don't like about it, which I'll explain in the review, so it's not gonna be all glowing, but this is definitely one of the best games I've ever played. And so let me know in the comments below what you thought of this game. Please point out any rules errors I may have made. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here, and I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.